This week's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, hello, hello everybody. Thank you ever so much for tuning into this week's video. Now then, if you watched last week's video, uh, I covered some tips, tricks, techniques, whatever you want to call them in Lightroom. Now, they were pretty basic, but as I mentioned in that video, a lot of the time you don't need to do an awful lot to really elevate your photography. Uh, all it takes is contrast adjustment and brightening certain areas, darken, darkening areas. And as I said in that video, what it really boils down to is being able to recognize good light for the subject matter that you're photographing, being able to at least have the basics of how to use your camera and also composition. If you can get those three things sorted out and you have a reasonably good knowledge of those things, then you shouldn't have to do much in Lightroom or Photoshop, unless of course you, you really want to. So in this video, I wanna continue with that theme, except this time we're gonna be doing a little bit of dodging and burning. Now, primarily dodging. And again, I want to keep it uh, limited to uh, Lightroom because I know most of you probably use Lightroom more than Photoshop. Now, I will say that even though I'm gonna be working on this image in Lightroom, personally, I would probably use Photoshop as well, especially for the dodging because it's just a little bit more precise and I can use uh, what are called luminosity masks so I can pinpoint certain tones in an image and lighten them and darken them. Whereas in Lightroom, you can do it, but it's not quite as precise. But I promise you, we'll try and get this image done in Lightroom so that you, at least you can see that if you want to start playing around with your images and just kind of uh, drawing attention to certain areas, you can definitely do it in Lightroom successfully. So without further delay, let's just jump right into this image. And this is a, this is a woodland image, but uh, you can use the same techniques in, in any photograph. All right, let's uh, jump in and uh, see what we can do with this image. All right, this is the photograph I'm gonna be working on today. Now this is an older photograph that I took in 2016 with a Nikon D800. I've always liked the photograph, but uh, it obviously needs a little bit work of work done to it in that uh, the light was somewhat flat, but there is some directional light. You can see that on these shrubs here, they're a little bit brighter. There's some lights, very subtle on the side of this uh, Sitka spruce here and on this tree here. So the idea is to try and give this image some depth. It's quite two dimensional right now. Add some depth and uh, sort the colors out a little bit. Uh, incidentally, this image I'm working on because uh, I'm trying to put together a book on old growth forest, and this is one of the candidates for that book. So the first thing I'm going to do is go down to transform. I'm just gonna click on this uh, constrained crop. The trees is kind of leaning over a little bit. I think they were leaning over slightly, but ideally I want them to be vertical. I'm just going to grab the rotate and just rotate this just, just a little bit to the, uh, the left, something like that. And the, now is it the vertical? Yeah, the vertical. Yeah, something like that maybe. The reason why I uh, ticked the constrained crop is because that this con constrains everything into the crop. If you undid that, then you'd have all these white lines and you'd have to crop it afterwards. This is just easier to do it this way. All right, we're just going to go up to the basic module here. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is take the saturation down ever so slightly. As far as the temperature goes, um, I found a, a little bit uh, magenta and when it comes to woodland images, I find greens very hard to deal with sometimes, so I tend to go on the side of blue. Um, I'm not really into the orange, yellowy glow kind of effect, uh, so I try and keep everything a little bit cooler because I find that greens do have a lot of cool in them. Uh, but some areas like these shrubs here will have a lot of yellow in them as well. So that looks pretty good. Uh, the blacks, 
uh, I seem to do this on all of my images. Uh, hold down the Option or Alt key on uh, Windows or PC. And if you hold down, the screen will go white. And now you can see where the blacks are pretty much, there's no detail in them. If I go further to the left here, it just brings in more blacks. The, de the blacks get denser and denser. So I like them to be just on the verge of, so something like that, right there. And the same with the whites. Now the whites, you'll notice that in the sky here, I have this uh, little arrow turned on. The red is just telling me that that area there doesn't have any detail in the original. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm just going to go check out the whites option again or alt and I'm just going to bring these up a little bit see how far I can go before it just gets way too um, overexposed in the background there. See what I'm trying to do is if you want to create depth, you need contrast. And the only way you can do that is by, well, you could use the contrast slider here. But ideally, what I try to do is bring the brightest areas in the image up and the darker areas down to create that contrast. And you'll notice that already by just bringing up the whites from the original, I've already added a little bit of contrast and ultimately depth. Now I'm not too bothered about the um, the blown out areas in the background here. We could probably sort those out a little bit later. So when you're looking at an image like this of a woodland, you've got to think to yourself, okay, well, what is it in this image that I really want to bring uh, the viewer's attention to? And even though this was several years ago, what I really loved about it was this big old Sitka spruce. That, that was kind of the foundation to the photograph. And then I just uh, composed the rest of the scene around this one big old tree. So since that's the most important part in this image for me, that's the part that I want people to look at first. So to do that, now it is in the center of the frame, so it's hard to miss, but I want to bring up the the lights or the or, or the highlights on this side of the tree and keep the shadows as dark as possible. So let's just bring this down a little bit more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the masking area here and collect uh, select a brush. I'm going to keep the density and the flow quite low, and I'm actually going to click on Auto Mask. And what I'm going to do, I'll just bring the feathering down just a tad. I'm just going to paint the side of this tree here. Now in Photoshop, uh, I would just use a brush and, and, and dodge and burn tool. But of course, we don't have that here. So this is slightly different where you paint the area that you want first, and then you start fiddling with exposure and such. So and rather than try to do everything all at the same time, I just find it easier if you concentrate on one section and then move on to something else. And then you can always adjust it afterwards. If it's done globally, then some areas in the frame might look really good, but then there'll be other areas that won't look so good. And it's, it's kind of hard to uh, change those after the fact. So what, what I'm gonna do here is just I'm gonna bring up the whites and it'll it'll be very subtle and the idea is to try and be as subtle as possible don't overdo it you can bring the highlights up maybe a little bit even though that doesn't do an awful lot um, and then the exposure now you have to be really careful with this one because this will make a, a drastic change and i'm slowly going to bring the, the exposure up see i could bring it up to something like that and that might work um I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit from there. And you can see already that by just doing that, we've created some depth within that tree. We have natural light coming in here uh, from the left. It is hitting the tree and we're just enhancing that. 
So you'll notice on this tree as well, we can kind of see the same thing. So again, I'm just going to grab another mask, a brush again, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to paint in this section here. Like so. And the reason why I'm, I'm using the auto mask is I, I don't want it to, um, oops, I don't want it to bleed over from these edges. Now it will a little bit, but I'm trying to control it as much as possible. If I took the auto mask off and tried to do this edge here, then it would bleed over to the trees in the background and I don't want that. Okay, so we have that masked out. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. This time I'm gonna bring the whites up, uh, the highlights a little bit, and the exposure. And again, you can see that we've created this, uh, this illusion of this light hitting this tree in here, like so. And again, if we hit the backslash, you can see that we've just created that little bit of depth. Right then, what else can we do? Well, it'd be nice to brighten up these uh, shrubs here a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another uh, mask, but this time I'm gonna go for the color range. And I'm just gonna grab, you'll see there's a, an eyedropper because this is a different green than the rest of the frame, it should be easier to isolate. So just going to uh, click on that light green there and you can see the color up here. And all of a sudden you can see that it's masked out and we can adjust that. We can refine it by either giving the mask uh, covering more area. So you'll notice that now it's on the ferns a little bit as well or we can bring it down so that it just picks that one single color. But I think what we'll do is we'll just bring it up just a little bit. And again, we're going to brighten up those areas ever so slightly. So I'm going to pick out the whites again and just slowly bring those up just a little bit. Don't want to overdo it. That's, oh, that's too much. And if you want, you could also change the color slightly. If you wanted to warm it up a little bit, you could bring some yellow in there. If you wanted to cool it down, bring some blue in there. But I think in this case, we're just gonna leave it. If anything, I'm just gonna bring the saturation down just a tad, like so. Okay, what else can we do? Well, I'm gonna use another mask here. This time I'm gonna grab a brush and I'm going to paint these bright areas back here. So let's get a nice big, uh, let's get a feathered brush here. We'll just increase the size. Something like that. And I'm going to turn the auto mask off. And I'm just going to paint in these bright areas but not the, uh, like the trees in the background. That's kind of what I'm trying to say here. Let's just increase the, uh, the flow a little bit. Uh, this section here, this section back here, maybe that there. Doesn't matter if it bleeds over a little bit. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use the dehaze and add a little bit of haze, not too much. Also, again, the whites. And perhaps a little bit of exposure, like so. Okay, so 
the image is almost done, um, but you'll notice that these white patches in the sky that were originally in the, in the original file uh, are getting a little bit unmanageable here. Um, so what I tend to do with uh, images when I have sky like this, there's, well, there's one or two things. I'll either clone in areas um, with other foliage. Smaller areas tend to be okay, but a large area like this can be quite difficult. This might work here. You could probably clone in some branches or something. Or the other option that I find works not too bad is to brighten the area around the white so it's not so jarring, which we've already done. Uh, or what we can do is try and bring back some of that detail because there was some detail around this area. It's just that we've brightened it up so much that we've lost even more detail. So I'll just go into the masking here and we'll try it out. We can grab a brush and I'm just going to make this paintbrush just a little bit smaller. Just paint in these areas uh, where it's the brightest. That part there and up here. Maybe up there. That's pretty good. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, I just find that these bigger areas are a little bit distracting. And then what we can do is we'll grab the dehaze and I'll bring it all the way down to the end. And I'll bring the whites down as far as I can till it starts to get a little gray looking and bring the highlights down. And you'll notice as I bring the highlights down, it's actually brought back some of that detail. The trick is, is that we don't want to darken the area around those bright spots. So if I brought the exposure down, then you'll notice that it starts to get dark all around where I've painted. And I think that uh, by dehazing it, what we're doing is we're just kind of hazing out that effect. So if I brought it up the other way, you can see that there's not a huge difference, uh, but it just kind of softens the background a little bit. Once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for supporting my channel and sponsoring this week's video. One of my favorite features of a Squarespace website is the ability to quickly and efficiently update a gallery or page either from a desktop computer or while on the fly using the Squarespace app from my mobile device. Loading multiple images onto a page is quick and offers the ability to change a design or page quickly and elegantly without any coding knowledge. Want to sell your products? No problem. Setting up shop is also quick and intuitive. Sound interesting? Why not head over to squarespace.com and try it for free. And if you like what you find, use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. And like I said, uh, you know, if you wanted to perhaps clone out some of these areas or, or bring in a little bit of detail from other areas uh, in the background here, Photoshop is probably easier to do that uh, than with uh, Lightroom. So there we have it. Uh, this is more or less the final result. And this was the original here. So I think we've accomplished what we set out to do, and that was to add a little bit of depth. Uh, again, the great thing about Lightroom is that if you need to make a few adjustments, say you wanted to brighten up the side of the trunk here, you can do that by just picking out that mask and bringing in perhaps a little bit more exposure. Same with this tree here. Uh, you could bring up the exposure a little bit more in there. Uh, if you wanted to perhaps bring more attention to the center portion of the image and not so much the, the outer edge, what we could do there is we'll just reduce the size of the image here and we'll pick out another uh, mask, say a radial gradient. And could do it nice and big here. 
something like that. Invert that and then bring the exposure down just ever so slightly. You can see we're darkening the edges there. It's like a vignette, but not so much on the top here. So again, there's lots of things you can do to really draw attention to what it is you want to bring attention to. And as I said in the beginning of this video, my uh, interest was really in, in this uh, Sitka spruce in the center here. Just out of uh, interest for some of you, this was uh, the, obviously the edit that we just did. This was the original raw file. And here's an edit that I did several years ago when I first made this image. Here's the edit of a slightly different composition. But you can see that there are some differences. Uh, I think in a more recent edit like this one, I would probably not go quite as far with the dodging and burning. But of course, it's a, it's a personal choice. Uh, maybe cool this down just a little bit more. Maybe not that much, but you get the idea. Right, once again, thank you ever so much for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you picked up a couple of tips. And if you did enjoy it, please be sure to give me the old thumbs up. And if you enjoy the content of my channel, be sure to hit that subscriber button. That's always helpful as well. All right, until next week, bye-bye.